And welcome back. Whatever happened to Freddie Ljungberg? Well, Seattle, that's what happened to the Swedish midfielder. He's trying his luck in the USA's Major League Soccer with the newest addition to the league, the Seattle Sounders. We sent our reporter, Georgie Bingham, to catch up with Freddie. This, by the way, is one of the traditions at the Pike Place Market in the city. Well, why not? Fish is the theme, and it hasn't taken Freddie Ljungberg long to find a sushi restaurant. So, without further ado, when Freddie met Georgie. Tell me about your expectations of what you would hope for yourself for the next few years here. I mean, what I want is something to stimulate me and, and learn and uh, learn about America and, uh, and especially probably to get soccer growing. If you look at the population America has, and uh, they sh could, well, I think they could be so much better on the national team level. And uh, if we can just keep kids keep on playing a bit longer and stuff, I think that could develop to a very strong soccer country, to be honest. Well, football, depends how you want to say it. I'd like to move on, if possible, to David Beckham. Do you think what's happened recently has had a bit of a damaging effect on MLS? I don't think it's a damaging effect on the, on the MLS in, in any way. I think if, if David can go in and plays from a start at uh, AC Milan, um, he probably shows that the, the MLS is maybe better than what uh, some people maybe in Europe, Europe think. I mean, it's, it's not the standard of the Premiership, and maybe like when I'm used to like the Champions League or whatever, it's not, uh, not that standard, but uh, it's hard to like uh, say how good they are, but maybe like um, the Dutch League maybe or something like that, I would maybe say, and maybe I'm not the right man yet. I haven't played a game yet, so I'll wait. <laughs> For a lot of people who come to Major League Soccer are coming towards the end of their career and you're quite young compared to some of them. I thought it was the fair thing to do. If I'm ever going to go to America, I should do it while I still play some really good football. I'd like to move on to your reflections of your time at Arsenal because you've been away from it for a few years now. How do you look back on your time at Arsenal? That's the best years of my life. I mean, it's, uh, we were like a, like a family and uh, I mean, we had great players, we had a great team and uh, yeah, we kind of won everything we could win and uh, but all the guys on the team were great I mean it's, it's like we had 11 captains on the pitch like everybody knew what they were supposed to do and um, we socialized off the pitch and now for me that was a great time how much of it was down to Arsene Wenger he's a, in my opinion a, a great, great manager I mean he's a demanding coach and he wants a very uh, a technical game and uh, I know sometimes we bought new players they're good players but they struggle to do the exercises or the, even the warm-up things we do like just technically in the beginning so it puts a, a high level on that and, but then no, I think it's good and the main thing he knows exactly how he wants to play football so when he buys a player he he buys a player that will fit into that way um, that knows like maybe he, he wants them very technical and normally he wants quite quick players as well and um, so, so he's very intelligent I think how and who he picks uh, to buy and uh, then when he gets in there he's very clear of how the game should be played or like can be quite quick and like you know the ball is not supposed to bounce when you pass it, it should be on the right foot and there should be everything is perfect when we train and uh, <clears throat> To be on that level to pass and play that game, I think that's very important. Wenger's role at Arsenal, do you feel like his role has got harder in the last couple of years? Maybe it is harder, like he can't, if you look at maybe the money they're spending, they're not spending as much money as they did before and, and of course that maybe puts more pressure on him. Uh, maybe he can't get exactly all the time what he wants and that means maybe he could a bit more in, in the past. You know, he, he looks, even when he buys players, not just how good they are. He wants them to fit into the dressing room. He doesn't want any problems, and uh, I think that's important. Do you see Arsene Wenger staying at Arsenal for uh, much longer? I mean, <laughs> if I say something controversial, I will do the headlines and make the headlines, but I, I know he's a winner. He always wants to win uh, just as much as any of other players we had when we won things and got as angry as we did when we lost. So. If, uh, you know, like now when they're not winning or they are, are fourth or fifth now, I, I know he's probably not happy about not winning. And um, I don't know if he gets a great opportunity to, to go somewhere where they would maybe spend more money and, and, and win things. Maybe that's a, a possibility. But uh, at the same time, he likes to uh, bring up new players and he's been at Arsenal for a long time. So 
tough one to call. Does it great when you hear them talking about the top of the table and Arsenal's not mentioned? Excuse me for swearing, but it pisses me off a little bit. I mean, it's uh, for me, Arsenal is uh, for me, it's it's the biggest club in in England, and uh, and for me, I take it for granted that they should be talked about as the as the big big boys. And uh, of course, it's a sad thing, but I think they will come back and they will do great things. For more from Freddie, you can see the interview in its entirety on our website, ESPNSoccerNet.com. Shaka. Arsenal are still very dear to Freddie Lindbergh's heart, quite clearly. Yeah, clearly, and, and so it should be. Freddie played such a big role for Man at a time where Arsenal playing some of their best football. I think it's almost a distant memory now, given how Arsenal, Arsenal's relative struggles anyway. But certainly, and with Freddie Lindbergh, you look at that team, such a fantastic team, Thierry Henry, and you wonder where it's gone wrong. And don't get me wrong, it's not all gone wrong for Arsenal, but things certainly have changed. They don't have the superstar that they, that they did back then as, as teams now need to have to, to, to succeed. And, and really they're playing well now, but when you compare to the team that Freddie was a part of, it really is chalk and cheese. But now Janusz, he's a Seattle sounder. Uh, he's not playing at the moment because of a hip injury, but hopes to be back in action soon. Cracking start for Seattle in the first game in the USA's Major League Soccer. Great crowd, 3-0 victory against New York Red Bulls. Yeah, and this man was special, Freddie Montero, scored the first one, you see, set, setting up the second one, uh, you know, Evans scoring, and of course the third one was superb, and uh, see Mike um, Petke here making a huge mistake, but look at this finish, under pressure here, no problem, the youngster from Colombia, 21, 22 you years old. You told us to watch out for Freddie you, Montero. You know, I've been Give hearing so much about him, and, but you know, sometimes you have to validate that on the pitch, and, and clearly he did, and, and it was great, I think, you know, Seattle took the energy of the crowd, it, it was incredible to watch for me, I think great opening for MLS, and, and uh, for Freddie Lundberg, I think he better get healthy because I'm not sure if he finds himself in the starting <laughs> 11. <laughs> it's always hard to predict who's going to win Major League Soccer because of the structure, because of the way things work out, because of the, the format there. But, uh, Tommy, you'll want to have a stab. Yeah, I'll have a stab, but I mean, I'm going to base my pick on the fact that I can't be wrong every year, so I'm picking the Red Bulls. I mean, I picked them every year to win it yeah. when they were the Metro Stars and then right. when they became the Red Bulls. So, okay. hey, I'm saying that the Red Bulls can win it again. Yeah. briefly. I'm going to st stay with Columbus Crew, my former team, and Robert Vajeja, the new coach, one of my best friends. I uh, can't go against him. Columbus, the winners last year. Shaka? For me, it's going to be Real Salt League. Young management team and Jason Christ, Jeff Kassar. Jason Christ yeah. just signed a, a new contract. <laughs> Speaking of new contracts, and I think that would be enough to, to spur Real Salt League over. All right, we shall see. They are off and running in the USA's Major League Soccer. OK, we're far from finished on the edition of the programme. The small matter of the draw for the UEFA Cup quarterfinals when we return.